I'm coming to you early this morning. Um, the sunrise is so amazing this morning. I just had to bring you on early with me just so you could see the incredible colors. Oh, and they just keep changing moment by moment. <laughs> I had to go in uh, the house for a minute and I knew, I just knew, I was like, I'm gonna come back out to something spectacular. <laughs> I mean, it's always spectacular because every day is new and unique and spectacular, spectacular in its own ways. But man, I came out to like, um, it wasn't quite crimson. It was sort of a, I don't know, the oh, it was just a beautiful, almost like a salmon color, like a rich uh, orangish red. Anyway, it was just gorgeous. So I'm gonna turn it around so we can watch it together while I talk about um, Mark chapter 14. And what is in a name? And what struck me, um, or what caught my eye this morning, and this is a difference between Mark, you know, the difference of the nuances and the details that we get in the different stories and the tellings of the stories. But in Mark, in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, when the disciples, Jesus wants the disciples to stay awake and he's got Peter, James, and John with him. And um, when he is telling Peter to stay awake, he actually says, refers to him as Simon. And I picked up on that nuance and it really got me thinking about names. And in the Bible, we do get people that are, get new names. And that's not something that we do a lot of in modern times, but maybe, maybe we should uh, a little bit more. In the world of psychology and coaching, um, it is a technique that we use. Um, we have people name um, parts of themselves or as they're trying to establish a new identity to even think of a new name um, that they can invite in to make decisions and also and to create kind of a new identity almost like a superhero sometimes it's referred to as a voice of wisdom a hero um, you know to represent sort of that higher self and even those uh, higher desires to change, although it's really hard. And then sometimes we will also have people name their um, sort of their lower survival old self um, that we might call voice of judgment or uh, some even might refer to it, some of those aspects of ourselves as villains. Um, and even the movie Inside Out, a Disney movie, kind of is a good uh, representation of this uh, tactic within the world that can, or uh, within the psychology world, you know, that it can be very helpful. And some will do exactly like the movie Inside Out and really try to help, you know, it's helpful for some people to really have multiple, you know, name all the various emotions and different aspects of themselves. Um, if there's a lot that's in there to sort out. But for most of us, even just coming up with one name can be very helpful. And some people respond well to um, naming their lower self, you know, something so that they can kind of go, get out of here, so-and-so, I see you. And we're not doing that. Um, and some, for some, you know, naming the higher self works better. Or you can employ you can employ any of these uh, helpful strategies with yourself. But it is a really helpful thing. And here in these passages, that's kind of exactly what uh, Jesus is doing. And part of why, even with Simon Peter in particular, he didn't give him just another name. Like, you know, Saul just gets renamed and he gets the new name Paul. But with Simon Peter, who 
is going to be the rock of the church, he actually gets two names. And as I understand it, Peter was, I'm going to turn around so you guys, it's a beautiful sunrise. Peter was sometimes a little bit um, overzealous and would say things out of passion. You know, we have this example before this story where um, Jesus is letting Peter know that he is going to betray him uh, three times before the rooster crows and twice. And Simon, Simon comes out immediately and says, no, no, that's impossible. I would never do that. I would die first. You know, he's very dramatic and zealous and passionate. And Jesus is like, no, nope, sorry, it's going to happen. And it probably needed to happen because that was the conviction. Like Jesus probably picked a character like Simon because he needed that fire, that passion, that, uh, that, you know, zest to go out and that boldness, you know, to build a church. But he also needed him to be uh, reasonable and steadfast and even allowing him in a moment like that to be with him in the garden and then to just hours later betray him and even him catching himself in that um, or denying him, not betraying him, denying him. Judas betrayed him. Uh, Peter did not betray him. He denied him. And that was the conviction that he needed to probably become more of Peter that the church needed going forward. Um, and we just get this tension of him falling back into his flesh. And Jesus does that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak and they keep falling asleep. Um, so that is sort of Simon Peter is the perfect representation of with two names, flesh and a willing spirit. The flesh is Simon. Peter is the new, the new man, the willing spirit. Um, and depending on the scenario, Jesus will interchangeably use those names or he gets both names. I just think that's such a beautiful thing and something that we see, you know, where I just love seeing psychological, what we are learning about brain science and psychology verified and even right there, like saying here, you might want to try this with yourself. <laughs> we did this in the here in modern times. We're just like, eh, you know, that's, that seems kind of weird to just give yourself a new name, but it can be so powerful. Now you don't have to go and like legally change it and then start signing documents differently, but within your world and within your brain, you might want to give it a try. Ask God to even give you a name, um, but or really th think of something that resonates with you. I do this all the time with my clients, and it is so powerful. It can be, and if you can catch yourself in a moment and go, oh, who's coming out to play here? <laughs> and really consciously choosing, and it is, a, it is a tool to sort of access a part of you, the part of you that you really want, or... Conversely, when you're not showing up exactly as you would have yourself in the higher self and the desires to maybe forgive yourself and go, oh gosh, yep, I've been practicing being so-and-so for so long and of course she's going to come out and play. And it is a way for us to sort of um, detach a little bit, but not so much so, but it's a part, it's a way to acknowledge all parts of ourselves that might be struggling. Change is hard and it takes a little bit of internal struggle. And interestingly enough, when you personify and use a technique like this, it can actually, and paradoxically, unite the parts of you, but also differentiate the parts of you enough that you can sort of go, oh, I see what's happening here. I see who's who's running the show here. We really are complicated beings with sometimes, and you all know this because you've experienced it, that you sometimes feel like you're um, 
your split personality, you know, a divided person. Like how, Paul even talks about it. How, why do I do the things I do not want to do or the thorn in the side? Um, and the morning, I believe we are a different person in the morning <laughs> than we are in the evening because the morning person is rested um, or at least should be more rested um, is thinking a little bit clearer, hasn't had to make a whole lot of decisions yet. They, if you slept well, then your brain was able to do a lot of housekeeping and sort of sort and file away things from the previous day and organize. So you wake up more with a more organized, you know, um, cleaned out mind. Um, if you're taking care of yourself and if you're not doing things like I was like drinking on a regular basis or doing any of these other putting, you know, talk too much or maybe too much sugar. If you're doing things that disrupt your sleep, uh, that's a good place to start actually. <laughs> um, but once you're getting good sleep, your mind, you should be waking up in a pretty good state of mind and a more organized mind. Uh, but we make thousands and thousands of decisions a day. So that evening self can sometimes be a totally different person. And so the morning self should be making a lot of decisions uh, for the evening self um, and pre-deciding some things to help, to help the girl out, help the man out. Um, and that is another useful strategy, which is why journaling and getting yourself organized in the morning can be really helpful because life just happens. Phone calls come out of nowhere, events, things that can sideline us. Um, but the more organized and decided we can and grounded we can be in the morning, um, the better we can um, even react from a healthy place that works better for everybody, not just for you. And one thing I'm even trying to add, but I'm not very consistent at it yet, but I'll get there eventually, is even giving thought, a, just a minute of thought, to the next day, like, what would I like to? And giving yourself, your brain, even another thing to incorporate while housekeeping's going on. And so you're already even setting, pre-deciding and setting a positive tone for the next day. Um, but for me right now, just getting a solid morning routine um, and grounding myself is, well, hey, rise and shine. Um, it really helps me not only rise, but also shine within my own life and hopefully with others. Um, but I'm just like Simon Peter. I'm, a, I'm fully human. I have a weak, I have weak flesh often, but I do have a willing spirit and there's something to be said for that. And on that, that's something Jesus, God, Holy Spirit can work with, um, is a willing humbleness um, that I'm trying to lay down and submit every day. Uh, but that flesh sure is strong, sure is strong. Um, I am going to show you here. But think about maybe using this technique for yourself, this strategy, this tool of coming up with a name if there's something that you're wanting to show up differently for in your life, um, think about what that person might be named. You know, give that, I like having the positive slant, but some people do work better with, um, or at least in the beginning with sort of maybe naming a bad part of them or what they perceive as a bad part. But I like incorporating all of us, like every part of us, even the part that is doing things that we don't love, is doing it to help us. It's a strategy. It's a problem that was trying to be solved. And so acknowledging and knowing that everything we do comes from a good place of wanting to take care of us. And I know it can seem really strange, like, why would I do that to take care of myself? Well, even when we're in bad situations and doing things or letting other things be done around us and tolerating, um, there's a phrase that we say, we're always winning at the game we're playing. And even if it's one that's not bringing great results in our life, it's like, we know how to do this dance. And if we go over here, that means we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to learn a new dance. 
but who knows if everybody else is gonna join in that dance or even gonna like us. So our fear of disconnection, change, our brain likes certainty over all of that, even when it's, we think that it's gonna, think that it's gonna be positive, but there, we don't know for sure, and our brain will always go with what it knows for sure, even when it's negative. Um, it's very interesting. And so when you know and your higher self is calling you to something, you're going to have to constantly push yourself into new situations of uncertainty so that you can give yourself new evidence, which is why having a name and an identity because those names we can put a whole concept and a whole new identity with and really lean into that and use that and then still keep confirming and we're like oh wow uh, maybe you've named your um the name that came to me this morning and i'm gonna have to look into this but i did this for myself this morning was hannah i'm like what would hannah do um, so I may even lean into it more than I have. I've used it off and on as a tool, but even me, even knowing how powerful this tool is and helping clients do it, I, it's one that I have not taken full advantage of myself with consistency. So I'm going to have to try to put my money where my mouth is and walk the walk on this one. So anyway, I'm going to start, uh, really putting some skin on Hannah and what Hannah is going to be able to help me do um you know where that i've always liked that name i think i had a friend that was that name in third grade that i connected to very deeply and very quickly and then we moved and i didn't wasn't able to maintain that connection so i guess hannah's always had a special place in my heart um so maybe i'll resurrect her um in my own life and we'll see all right, I'm going to leave you with this beautiful sunrise. And I'd love if you comment below and tell me if you've heard of this strategy, what you think of it, and what names you might come up with for yourself um, as you think about what might be possible for you and or to even just help you in moments where you are you know, struggling and you need to like sort of differentiate, uh, differentiate that part of yourself as just that human weak flesh part. But you, you, who you truly are, you have a willing spirit and to start not identifying that and thinking of yourself as the things that you do. Um, we are not what we do. Um, so this is a powerful strategy that I want you to give a try. Good morning, good morning. Um, and go rise and shine. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera around one more time so you can see this beautiful sunrise. All right, 